what to make a video about today. The only project of all the projects on this boat that are near completion is the Yanmar heat exchanger rebuild. So let's go take a look at the heat exchanger. Hello, we are Patrick and Rebecca Childress on the Valiant 40 Brick House and we are hauled out in Richards Bay, South Africa doing a tremendous amount of work on this boat. We are preparing to cross the Atlantic to Uruguay and then head down to Tierra del Fuego. But right now, let's go into the engine room and deal with the leaky Yanmar heat exchanger. while back a leak developed at the forward end cap of the Yanmar heat exchanger at the bottom edge. We were out in the middle of the Pacific at that time with few resources other than what we had on the boat. I was able to take the end cap off, clean up the area of deteriorated aluminum and patch it up with Marine Tex, which is a very high temperature, what I think of as a super epoxy. Then using high temperature silicone as a gasket, put it all back together and it held for the longest time, but eventually did started leaking again. So I repeated the repair. And eventually, now that we're in Richards Bay, South Africa, I felt this was this time to take it off and have the repair done properly at a radiator shop. To get the heat exchanger off, I first had to get the riser off of the heat exchanger at the rear end of the engine. And that wasn't easy. I had to unwrap some of the asbestos insulation on the riser to get to the bolts. The only way to get to those four bolts, as it turned out, was to take all the asbestos off of the elbow area. And when I did that, I did wear a Tyvek suit, some gloves, a respirator, and I had a little spray bottle of water so I could spray the asbestos before I unwrapped it. It was very dry, so it would be a lot of uh, dusting particulate floating around in the air if I didn't wet it down. But all of this turned out for the better. And what a terrible surprise on this engine that has about 4,600 hours on it. This elbow, the riser, it was in terrible shape. It was a disaster that was going to happen somewhere down the line. So fortunately, we're taking care of everything now. And not only will we get the heat exchanger rebuilt, but a whole new riser. Now at the very top of the elbow, you can see the gray marine text that I used to stop a leak. And of course, that's just a patch, certainly not a repair. So we were going to be doing some work on this riser anyway, but it's amazing how well that marine text worked in this incredibly high temperature area to plug up some very small leaks. So we have to just disconnect the uh, riser from the exhaust hose and we'll get that whole thing out of the way and then continue working on removing the heat exchanger. So by using specific petcocks, I have drained all the salt water and coolant out of the heat exchanger. So now we are ready to take the hoses. There's two hoses on the aft and two hoses off the front section of the heat exchanger. And then release the arm of the alternator adjuster. Inspect this hose clamp. I'm gonna put all new hose clamps on here no matter what these look like. I don't wanna take any chances. I've had these things break on me before. This looks fine, but it's going to get replaced anyway, and I'll throw that one away. That takes a 13 millimeter wrench. I'll go ahead and disconnect that completely here, and so we can fold it right on down out of the way. I keep this 13 millimeter wrench hanging up here out of the way, and its sole purpose is to adjust this one bolt for the alternator. Okay, now we have lots of clearance. The seawater pipe coming in and going to the raw water pump 
travels underneath the heat exchanger and is supported there by one bolt. So that has to come off before the heat exchanger can come off of its mount. Okay, so I'll continue pulling all these loose bolts out. I was very surprised. You look at these bolts, there's no rust on them. Easy to undo, nothing broke. Then there's one nut on a stud up here and there's one nut here I'll go ahead and take off. Now, I'm just worried about dropping this on my feet. I don't know how heavy this thing is gonna be. Oh, that's not bad at all. I thought it'd be a lot heavier than this. That's nothing. Easy. Okay. Every once in a while we have a nice surprise. So now that we have everything out of the boat, we can take a closer look at this nasty old riser and get a little closer look at the patch job on the front end of the heat exchanger. So before anything else, I wanted to scrub it down with laundry detergent. Get all the grease oil off of it, any residue, and flush out the insides with fresh water so that we don't have any salt water or antifreeze dripping in the car or <laughs> on anybody when we hand it over to the guys that are going to be fixing it. So as we dropped off the heat exchanger, I had to go back to the shop and ask these guys, how in the world do you get these cores out of the aluminum housing? I've tried to get this core out of this housing before and it would not budge. So it turns out they soak it in water for several days and if they have to, then add muriatic acid. Okay. Well, now what kind of acid did you say? Uh, pool acid. Or you can use a very slight uh, hydraulic acid. But, uh, muriatic acid, pool acid. Uh, how about like vinegar? Would that do it as well or is that uh, not strong enough? Not, uh, not strong enough. No, no. Uh, hydraulic acid and pool acid would keep aluminium. Yes. That's why you use a very light uh, Normally to five liters, like half a cup, not even half a cup. Yeah. Very strong. As soon as you see the, the activate, you know, the small bubbles, then you know it's activated. Mm -hmm. So then you've got to rinse it, you try and free it, and you put it, try it again. Because uh -huh. you could see as it was cleaning, it was the, the round the tube seat was opening. But you had to get it all out before you started to bang it. And a couple of weeks later, we went back to pick up the rebuilt heat exchanger. It was looking really good. It cost us around 250 US dollars, and what a big savings that was over the cost of thousands of dollars for a new one. The thermostat cover was getting pretty grody. I tried wire brushing it and also sandpaper, but that wasn't good enough, so I took it outside and put it to a wire wheel, and that cleaned it up nicely. But just to be on the safe side, we are ordering a new one and also a new thermostat. Just time to put in new parts and be on the safe side for a long time to come. So I just took a wire brush and this vacuum and cleaned out these exhaust ports as best as I could and made sure that I didn't brush things inward, even though I had the vacuum there, and try to sweep the contaminants, the carbon buildup, outwards towards the vacuum. And I've also cleaned very well around each exhaust port and we're ready for reassembly. So we put on a new gasket and then hang the heat exchanger and then I'm just sort of putting these bolts in. I'm not really torquing them down uh, so I can actually work from the right to the left. The best way though when I come back to torque I'll start from the center bolts and then work to the right and then come back to the center and work to the left. This is just a little bit of high temperature anti-seize. It doesn't take much. Not mattered that much, but yeah, we had talked about having this at an angle 
to go that way to help with the uh, yeah, water dispersion yeah, yeah, yeah. go that way rather than kind of back in. Would okay. that be hard to change? No, no. Uh, okay. Okay. So while everything is nice and clean, might as well do some spray painting with some high temperature spray paint I got at the automotive store. I like to try to have these hose clamps come off the top so if there is a leak dripping down, it won't be dripping onto the screw and causing that to rust. It's the most vulnerable part, especially if the hose clamp is a good 304 or 316 stainless and the screw might be a substandard stainless or maybe not even stainless at all. Oof. Okay, I'm finally getting these tightened up and there is one bolt that was actually it's a screw since there isn't a nut on the other side So there is one screw that was just longer than the others and it goes way in the back side I had forgotten about that, but luck would have it They all went back in to the same holes that they were supposed to So torquing this I don't know what the torque is. I would imagine probably about 12 foot-pounds, but I'm not going to tighten too much, just good and snug, as the Germans would say. I'll spray a little, I'll clean this up with um, some acetone, even though I just sanded it and it should be in wash it, so it should be pretty clean. I'll clean it up with a little acetone and then put some spray paint on there. That's common steel, this plate, this mounting plate. I didn't want a stainless steel right up against the aluminum housing. It has to be common steel. Even zooming way in, it's a little hard to see the bolt that comes from the aft cabin into the engine room. And that's a newly added support for the water hose. The rest of the riser has its own support, which is just to the right and outside of the picture. So everything is much better supported now than it ever has been in the past. Taking the forward cap off of the heat exchanger would void the warranty. It had already been pressure tested, but I wanted to inspect the copper core edges and they were a bit deteriorated as I expected so I would feel much better using high temperature silicone along with the new o-ring to seal this end of the cap now once I had everything back together I went and took the cap off of the aft end of the heat exchanger and much to my surprise there was no gasket there has to be a gasket to separate the upper and lower sections of straws the water goes in through the bottom section and then comes out through the top section and goes up to the riser. Without the gasket in there, all the water, the cooling water floods into this end of the heat exchanger and really doesn't know where to go. It won't have the cooling efficiency that it was designed to have. So all I have to do is make a gasket or preferably order one to go in here. I'd rather get one that's specified for the thickness and everything else. I know it's going to fit right the first time with no messing around. And then I can always use that one as a guide to make additional gaskets. Um, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, the guys working on this did a great job rebuilding it. It's one of those little oversights, but it's a darn good thing that I did pull these caps. I'm going to give Toad Marine a quick plug here. We are way up on the northeast coast of South Africa in Richards Bay. We could order parts way down on the south tip out of 
Cape Town, but they generally first have to get the parts from the US. Well, we can just order the parts from the US just as easy ourselves, and it actually saves us a lot of money. We've been using Toad Marine for our Yanmar parts for a long time. They do a great job. They ship internationally. They help give a lot of uh, schematics. It's just, uh, they alleviate a lot of headaches. You need any parts, check out Toad Marine. Finally, we can wrap this thing up. I still have the old asbestos insulation, but most of that is pretty ratty. It'll have to be thrown away. And I went out and bought this new fiberglass insulation. It is actually glass fibers. You don't want to touch it. You think asbestos is bad? I don't see how this stuff is much better. If you touch it, you get these fibers in your hands and it itches terribly. Much worse than grinding fiberglass on the hull of the boat. So I'm wearing double rubber gloves, a disposable suit, respirator, and tight-fitting goggles. So if any of these fibers are floating around in the air, I don't want to breathe them or get them in my eyes or anything else. So I start on the bottom, wrap it around. I use a plastic wire tie to temporarily secure things and then wrap tightly as I go up with a 50% coverage. Sometimes I double up on the wraps and work my way all the way up to the top and then back around whatever's left over. We work and wrap around in the downways, downwards direction. And then secure it temporarily until I can get some stainless steel wire ties on. Um, they only had one size, not long enough to really fit, so I used double. I put two of them together. So we have those at the beginning and at the end of the wrap. And then I used trolling wire, soft. It's a same thing as like leader wire, but it's very soft and very pliable. So it's very easy to twist around something like this and secure it. Rather than just cutting it off with the wire cutters, after twisting it and locking it together, I'll bend it back and forth, back and forth until it finally breaks. That way you don't have the meat hooks on the end. You can rub your hand over it and you don't get snagged. And same way with the stainless steel wire ties. So we have some good new insulation on the new riser and all we need now is the gasket for the end cap and we'll be good to go for a water test. I'll get the water hose up here even though we're on the hard and run the engine and make sure we don't have any leaks before we ever launch. I hope this video was worthwhile for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button. And also there's a link to the tip jar in the video description if you don't mind helping out in that direction. So thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.